dear students today we will be discussing on braking in the case of a three phase induction motor three phase induction motors are mainly used for industrial applications and is generally named as workhorse of industry during acceleration of an induction motor it draws extra energy from the electrical supply and the same will be stored in the moving parts when we say braking it is to either to reduce the speed or to bring the speed to zero there are two methods of braking there is mechanical and electrical type of braking the mechanical braking is usually used it is because of the friction between the brake shoe and the shaft of the machine the advantage is it is a rapid in action and the disadvantages are it will be resulting in wear and tear and because of the same there will be a heat that is dissipated and the effectiveness of this mechanical braking depends on the skill of the operator when we consider the electrical braking the advantages are it is quick and very smooth in operation we can have precise control of stopping the moment of stopping of the machine and it is reliable and it is easy to apply there are different methods that are used for electrical brake braking there is plugging dynamic braking and regenerative braking we had already discussed on plugging and regenerative braking when we were discussing the operation of induction machine regenerative braking is same as that of induction generator and plugging we had seen where we have a slip of 2 minus s by reversing the terminals of the supply or reversing the phase sequence of the supply we will be discussing one by one the first one breaking by plugging as i had already mentioned it is by reversing the supply phase sequence to the induction motor we can interchange any two connections of the supply that is if ryb the phase sequence that is followed for braking it can be changed to rby when the phase sequence of the supply is reversed there will be a reversal for the rotating magnet field too because of the same there will be a torque that is produced in the reverse direction and it tries to rotate in opposite direction which will cause a braking action for the motor and the same we had seen it will be having a slip of 2 minus s where s is the normal or original slip in the case of induction motor the diagram given shows how the plugging can be done by the circuit so in the circuit if the tpdt switch is put to the left side it will be ryb sequence that is given to the motor stator terminals and if the tpdt switch is put to the right side we can change the sequence to rby and the rate of reduction in speed can be obtained by changing the magnitude of the supply voltage once the machine speed drops to zero the supply that is given should be disconnected for the machine the torque slip characteristics also is given in the diagram so towards the right above slip equal to 1 it is the braking by plugging that so the slip will be from 1 to 2 in the case of plugging the disadvantages in the case of uh, plugging is it will be resulting in very high i squared r loss and corresponding to the same there will be 
a large amount of heat that is dissipated and because of the same that is the heat that is dissipated we cannot go for frequent plugging operation it can result in damage for the coils on the stator as well as the rotor bars on the rotor side and the advantage is it is very fast in action second type of braking that can be used in the case of induction machine is dynamic or rheostatic braking it is possible in the case of slipring induction machine in dynamic braking there will be an additional resistance that is connected to the rotor terminals of the slipring induction machine at the same time one of the terminals of the stator will be disconnected from the supply and will be connected to any one of the other two faces and depending on the way of connection from the first diagram that is given the diagram is given for two lead connection we can see one of the terminals that is from r phase on the stator side it is disconnected and it is kept as open that is what is meant by two lead connection in the second diagram we can see when it is disconnected from the r phase the stator terminal is connected to one of the other terminals which is not disconnected from the supply that is what is meant by three lead connection that is given after disconnecting one of the terminals of the stator we have two types that is two lead connection and three lead connection from the first diagram that is given the diagram is given for two lead connection we can see one of the terminals that is from r phase on the stator side it is disconnected and it is kept as open that is what is meant by two lead connection in the second diagram we can see when it is disconnected from the r phase the stator terminal is connected to one of the other terminals which is not disconnected from the supply that is what is meant by three lead connection since only two terminals of the stator windings are connected to the supply it will be continuing to run as a single phase machine there is a high rotor circuit resistance that is additionally given which will produce a negative torque and that will be resulting in braking operation of the motor the rheostatic braking can be used only for slipring induction machine because an additional resistance should be connected across the rotor terminals another dynamic braking is called dc dynamic braking which is applicable for both squirrel cage as well as slipring induction motor here the three phase supply that is given to the stator will be disconnected and will be connected to a dc source when a dc is fed to the stator terminals it will be producing north and south poles and that will be stationary in nature instead of rotating one when a three phase ac supply is given the magnetic poles that are created on the stator side will be rotating with a speed of ns that is synchronous speed but here since dc is supplied it will be producing a stationary north and south poles since the rotor is rotating the flux that is produced by the stationary north and south poles on the stator that is produced by dc supply will be cut by the rotor conductors and there will be an induced emf and even if the emf that is induced is sinusoidal in nature it will be stationary with respect to the stator magnetic flux or magnetic poles because of the same it will be producing a braking effect on the machine that is the interaction between the poles that are created on the stator which is stationary and the poles that are created 
because of the induction effect on the rotor will be stationary with respect to each other which will produce a braking effect the circuit diagram for the same is given in the figure here we can see on the stator terminals initially it will be connected to ryb phases that is to the three phase supply then the connection can be changed to a dc supply which is given through a rectifier and the magnitude of the braking torque or the rate at which the braking happens or the speed is reduced depends on the magnitude of the dc current that is supplied as well as the speed of operation because it depends on the strength of the magnetic poles that are created on the stator and the magnetic flux that is produced on the rotor side the strength of the mag magnet that is produced on the stator depends on the dc supply that is dc current and the strength of the rotor side magnetic flux depends on the speed because the current is produced by the emf induced which depends on the speed of the machine the advantages in the case of dc braking is it is very fast in response the heat that is dissipated in the system will be less compared to the plugging method and it can be applied for both squirrel cage and slipring induction machine and if it is the squirrel cage induction machine which is used along with dynamic braking by dc supply the energy dissipated doesn't depend on the magnitude of the dc current and the braking torque is proportional to the square of dc current in the case of squirrel cage induction machine the third type of braking that is used for induction machine is regenerative braking as i had already mentioned in regenerative braking the induction machine will be operated as an induction generator and it will convert the mechanical energy that is stored to the electrical energy and will be feeding back to the supply mains one of the examples is the electric vehicle that is driven by an induction motor so in the electric vehicle when the machine or the vehicle is run on a level track it will be drawing energy from electrical system and it will be converting the electrical energy to mechanical energy and when it is moving on a downward gradient or downward track the speed will be increased because of the gravitational force at the same time it will be operating at a speed above the synchronous speed when an induction motor operates above synchronous speed it will be acting as induction generator and it will be generating electrical energy which can be fed back to the mains and at the same time it will be having a braking effect on the machine the torque slip carries corresponding to regenerative braking or the machine operated as induction generator is given in the diagram you can see the slip will be negative that is the speed will be above the synchronous speed so in the actual speed of the machine will be greater than ns which will result in negative slip the operating point will be depending on the load torque and the torque speed characteristics of the machine in the case of slipring induction motor we can operate the same for different speed by adjusting rotor circuit resistance in the case of induction motor there is a possibility of changing the number of poles it is called pole changing method by which the synchronous speed can be adjusted it is obtained by rearranging the connections of the winding so to say if 50 hertz is the frequency of the system and it is having four poles the synchronous speed is 
1500 and if the number of poles is changed by rearranging the winding connections and it is made as 6 then the signal speed will be 1000 once the machine is operating at 1500 rpm that is around 1500 and suddenly if the number of poles is changed by rearranging the winding connections to 6 then the synchronous speed of the machine will be 1000 and actually the machine will be operating above the synchronous speed which, which will be equivalent to generating action in the case of induction machine. For regenerative braking since the machine is to be operated above the synchronous speed it should be properly designed to withstand the excessive speed. So in this section we are discussing on braking that is the reduction of the speed of induction machine or to bring the machine to a standstill condition or to stop the rotation. It can be obtained by different methods regenerative braking, braking by plugging and dynamic braking. Hope the methods are clear. Thank you.